What's going on guys, Nemesis here, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing another How to Pack a British Bam vs Hard Matches Part 2. As you can see, I pushed a 7300 trophies, so I did a lot of trophy pushing. And I was going to do a live pack of push of 7300 trophies, but the audio got kind of messed up. So yeah, I'm going to be doing some replays versus the hard matchups that I face and break it down for you guys. So without further ado, please make sure to like and subscribe, and let's go. Okay, so we got our game here against Marcos. He's going to be using Royal Giant with Skeleton King and Mother Witch and Zappy's Fisherman. I'm sure you guys have seen this deck. It's actually pretty popular. It's like a pretty popular RG deck. And typically, like, you know, RG can definitely be winnable for P.E.K.K.A. But this version is definitely a little bit harder because of, like, the Skeleton King making it having, like, a triple or three card cycle, essentially. He's going to go for, or I'm going to go for a Royal Ghost in the back, and he's going to go for a Skeleton King. So I'm just going to play a Electro Wizard. He's going to go for a Mother Wish. I'm still not sure exactly what deck he's playing, so I'm going to go for a Bandit. But to be honest, I did not expect him to play a Fisherman right there, so I got kind of lucky. I'm going to take a Fireball on top of that, which is a pretty solid play. Making sure I just kill any of his counter push right there, um, because he might have went for an RG if I didn't Fireball that. And yeah, we're chilling. He's gonna go for Zappies in the back, probably because I just used a fireball. So yeah. I'm gonna go for a magic archer in the back. Just play a little bit passively right now still. He's gonna go for a fireball of his own. I'm gonna go for a royal ghost. And I would have zapped this, but I know he has skeleton army in his deck, so I definitely want to keep the zap in hand, knowing that I can actually get value in this matchup. So that's why I did that. He's gonna go for the Mother Witch plus the Log, so he just used 6 Elixir, and with that being said, um, I kind of knew this guy's cycle, so I'm gonna pack up the bridge knowing that he has a Skeleton Army and I have a Zap, and we're gonna get a, like, a, a really good connection here, like he's gonna go for Zappies, but this is so crucial, um, my P.E.K.K.A was tanking for the Battle Ram, so like my barbs are getting so much value just destroying those Zappies, and that is literally just going to be his tower right then and there, and yeah. So pretty much the way like I like to play this matchup is just understand his cycle because I feel like that's the only way you can break through is just recognize what they have in their hand if they're low on elixir if you can just try to find a way to outplay them especially like in single elixir because if you don't really do any damage in single elixir it's going to be really hard to win in double elixir so yeah. Um, at this point in time I'm just going to be playing pretty passively because there's really no reason for me to overcommit. And yeah, so I'm just going to go for a peck on the back because there was really no other play I could have done in that situation. Like, if I went for a battle ram or something, um, it would just feed right into those troops. If I went for a zap, well, he has skeleton army. So yeah, Pekka was the correct play. And it's just kind of clogging up the lane in general. Like, he can't really RG if I have a Pekka in that lane. So yeah, I'm just going to go for a royal ghost plus e -Wiz. And like, as you can see, this guy's actually pretty salty that, um, that I beat him or something. I don't know why, but... Uh, <laughs> it's pretty funny to always like to BM players when they BM first or something like that, you know. It's really funny. So that's why I BM there just to kind of get a rise out of the guy. <laughs> so yeah, let's go for the next game. Okay, so we got our next game here against Pei. He's going to be using Royal Recruits with, you know, the Zappies and the Cage and stuff like that. I'm sure you guys seen this deck. It's a pretty popular deck. It's been around for quite some time. And uh, I actually got a few requests to do a matchup on this, so here you go. He's going to go for a Flying Machine in the back. I'm just going to go for a Magic Arch in the back, but uh, he took a Fireball, so I'm going to go for a Bandit. And we're chilling here. Um, we're definitely chilling here. I think at this point, since he definitely revealed the Electric Spear, I pack up the back. Yeah, I pack up the back right here because it's a really solid play in this matchup. Um, just to pack up the back and try to make a big push. What I think most people might struggle on in this matchup is that they might be dual lane pushing in this match, and that is like the worst thing you want to do is dual lane push. That is definitely how you lose the game. You want to single lane pressure as much as you can. Um, I'm going to go for a Royal Ghost plus Zap on top of that just to clean up the right hand lane. And at this point in time, um, I didn't want to go for a Magic Archer. I just wanted to take the Fireball because if I went for a Magic Archer, the Flying Machine would just destroy the Magic Archer, and that would force me to overspend on it. So yeah, this, the safe play was just to fireball it. Um, At this point, like I said, I just go for a bandit plus an e on top of those hogs. He's going to go for a electro spear plus bar barrel. Pretty smart on his end not to cycle the cage knowing I have a battle ram on the go just in case. And yeah. 
but like I was saying, the way I like to play this matchup is just to single lane pressure. Do not dual lane pressure in this matchup. It is the worst thing you can do. Because if you dual lane pressure in the lane without the P.E.K.K.A., the Royal Recruits just get so much damage and so much value on top of your troops that they're never ever going to bake or break through. So you need to use your P.E.K.K.A. as a tank for your support troops essentially. He's going to go for a Royal Hawk split. I'm just going to go for a Royal Ghost plus a Zap. And that Zap was mainly just a cycle, not really to do anything else. So yeah, at this point, I'm going to go for another P.E.K.K.A. in the back because he didn't have the greatest cycle. Like he just used Royal Hawk so I could safely P.E.K.K.A. the back without getting punished. Okay, and then he does he does the correct play. He goes for Royal Recruits at the bridge. Um, and I make a little misplay. I think I should have protected that Magic Archer because... Uh, he wasn't playing a fireball on it, and with that being said, I could have gotten more value out of that marcher if I were to play like a bandit to protect it. So, this is what I'm saying. I'm just single lane pressuring, trying to force everything to overwhelm him. And I actually get really lucky there, to be honest. I was only trying to hit the zappies with that fireball, but he put a cage right next to it as well, so I got pretty lucky there. And yeah, at this point, it's all about defending. So he's going to go for Royal Hogs. I'm just going to go for a Magic Archer plus an Electro Wizard High to defend the uh, troops. So yeah, single lane pressure and try to overwhelm him. That's that's all I can say on that one. Let's go over the next one. Okay, so we've got our next game here against Miguel. Uh, he's going to be playing Lava Barbs with Tombstone. And to be honest with you, Pekka has some matchups against Lava Hound decks. But it depends on, like, the variation of the Hound deck, you know? Like, there's some variations of Hound where it just completely destroys P.E.K.K.A. And there's some variations of Hound where P.E.K.K.A. destroys Hound. So, I think this matchup is definitely a little bit harder just due to the fact that he has a, uh, a Tombstone. And Tombstone is generally just super hard for P.E.K.K.A. So, yeah. I'm going to go for a Battle Ram to protect this Magic Archer just to get as much value from it as possible. And uh, at this point, I could kind of tell he doesn't even have a fireball because um, if they have a fireball, they would just be destroying the magic archer as soon as I play it. So yeah, this guy seems to not have a fireball because of that. And yeah, so I play the P.E.K.K.A. right there because he just used Tombstone. So he is going to have to respond to this with like a different card. And he has Barbarians, so he just revealed the barbs. So at this point in time, Typically, Lava Hound decks will only have two ground answers. Like, they'll have like a Val Cage or like a Skeleton King Tombstone. This guy has um, Tombstone plus Barbs. And he has a Miner as well, but I don't really count that because it's kind of like a fragile card and you could overwhelm a, a Miner pretty easily. But with that being said, I went for a really crazy push here because he didn't have Tombstone or Barbarians in cycles. So, like. And I took a zap on top of that flying machine because two e -whiz shots plus a zap will take out a flying machine. So yeah, we are sitting pretty right now. So yeah, we're chilling here. Uh, like I said, just typically the way you play Lava Hound decks in general is if they Lava Hound in the back, you pressure them opposite lane. Um, because you don't want to cycle anything like an air troop because first of all, like... Uh, Lava Hound decks will definitely just like break through if you just defend only. Um, Pekka isn't designed to just completely defend against Hound all the time. Um, it's really, really tricky and hard. Especially if they have Miner, like they could always Miner the Marchers and stuff like that. So yeah, um, I want to go for an e in the back at this point. Just kind of playing a little bit defensively, going for a really nice Fireball to destroy everything. And I believe at this point I go for a Magic Archer in the middle. It's pretty important to go for Magic Archers in the middle because um, if he wants to go opposite lane, I could just dual lane snipe with the Marcher because it has a good amount of range. Protecting my troops is really important because you need as much value from your air troops as possible to DPS everything down. So yeah, at this point, this is basically game. It's all really about tower trading and just putting on pressure when they pressure as well. That's all I could really say because like I said, just don't defend entirely. Try to pressure as well, and you should be able to walk away with the W. Let's go for the final game. Okay, so we got our final game here against like Sanat the Pro. He's going to be playing uh, Sparky with uh, Goblin Giant and Rage with the E Barbs, and this matchup is definitely really hard because of the Rage spell. I think like 
what gives Sparky players like a pretty solid matchup against P.E.K.K.A. is when they have Rage in their deck because it just gives their troops so much DPS and it just overwhelms you, you know? Like, if you make just one small error in your defense, your push is gone and they can just overwhelm and take your tower with one push, so yeah. I go for a P.E.K.K.A. there because I actually knew this guy still had Sparky, but I still went for a P.E.K.K.A. because he just played six el or 10 Elixir because he played Elite Barbarians plus the E-Wiz, so yeah. I didn't really want to cycle anything else because I think it would be like over committing and stuff like it would just kill my royal ghost, it would potentially kill my magic archer and I would just like take damage. I took a really nice zap on there trying to kill the sparky but he defended it really well by playing a dark prince so it's totally fine. I'm going to go for a royal ghost right here and I'm actually going to go for a pretty heavy counter push because he doesn't have that much elixir and like and it was just a solid play I can't get punished for it because he wasn't even at 10 elixir he's only at six so he just got to e bars and i'm just gonna take a fireball because like i said he doesn't have that much elixir so i can't get punished for being aggressive right there so i got a really solid damage lead and yeah really really important in this matchup that you have to have perfect micro interactions and what i mean by that is have really good time zaps have really good perfect e whizzes or perfect magic archers where they get the most value because you really need it in this matchup you got to get really good alignment magic archers off. You got to get really good timed Ewas off. You got to protect them a lot. Things like that. Because one one slip up in your tower is just gone. And that's, that's just how it is in this matchup. You know, like, you just literally need to play perfectly in this matchup. Because you will lose if you do not. It's kind of unfortunate. So it is winnable, but like I said, you know, perfectly. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go for a battle ramp in the back. I press the lane just to force something out because I don't want him to build that big of a push. He's going to go for uh, Elite Barbarians. I'm just going to go for a Royal Ghost in the back. And I'm going to go for a P.E.K.K.A. And see, that's what I mean. I almost messed up the interaction right there. Like, that Sparky almost shot my e -Wiz, And that would have pretty much been game if that did happen. So, yeah. Really, really fortunate that that e -Wiz shot the Sparky last second. Otherwise, things could have turned bad really quickly. I'm going to go for a battle ramp opposite lane because I have a free magic archer there. So even if he played the elite barbarians, my magic archer would do some good damage to the point where the e-barbs wouldn't get that much counter push in the first place. I'm going to go for a royal ghost in the back. Just a DPS down the, the left bit of elite bars. I'm going to go for a bandit to pressure him. And pretty solid play. At this point, I'm playing a little bit defensively. I kind of got this game secured. All I got to do is, like I said, have perfect micro interactions and don't mess anything up. I'm going to go for a Pekka over here. Um, sorry if you guys can hear something in the background. Um, my bad for that. Um, but I'm going to go for an Electro Wizard. Never really want to go high, especially because he has uh, Elite Barbarian. So if you, he was high, potential for him just to E-Barbs you. And yeah. Uh, at this point, he kind of knows it's game because I had a really good defense where I had a magic archer plus an electro wizard there And I'm just gonna pour the pressure on because he's pretty low on elixir and there's really nothing he can do about it So that is how I like to take care of that matchup um, That's going to wrap up this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll do more in the future